All right, everybody, welcome. I want to jump right in. Picture with me for a moment that you're just going through some kind of big transition at work and it's a little stressful and there's something you don't quite know what to do with. And then you head home and there's some relational struggle. Maybe you're having conflict with your significant other or you're parenting a teenager, let's say, or you're having young children, or maybe a roommate is difficult to deal with. And then finances enter into it. And now you have a bill you didn't expect, a car broken down to replace something on a vehicle so that you can get to work. All of these, these factors start to bring some chaos into your life and you're not quite sure what to do. And so you pray, God, please give me peace and remove these obstacles. Well, I want to challenge you right now in the verse we're going to jump into. Maybe God actually wants to give you a different kind of peace. Let's jump right into it. In 2 Thessalonians 3.16, Paul, the apostle, is writing his second letter to the church in Thessalonica, and he actually, in his benediction, at the very end of the letter, he writes, he writes this. Let me read it to you. He says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Small little nugget, Lord of Peace. That's actually the only time that title is given in the New Testament. But he says, the Lord of Peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. This is so important right then. What Paul is doing is he's writing a letter to a church that's experiencing real physical persecution continually. And they are just going through some of the hardest times as new Christians, wondering where is God? God. And what he's trying to do is trying to inspire hope and faithfulness that even in the midst of persecution, they will follow the ways of Jesus and stay steadfast. As I gave that imagery before, the chaos, have you ever experienced that kind of chaos and maybe ask God for, for peace? God, bring me peace in this situation. Remove these obstacles. Or right then, Paul isn't saying, God, God, fix all these issues and these persecutions. Remove them so they can experience true peace and have an easy life. Okay, thanks. No, he's doing something different. He's saying, and I want to challenge us all with this today, give them the peace that even in the midst of the chaos, in the midst of that persecution, give them peace separate from their circumstances, separate from the storm they're facing. Now, what does this look like? That might be hard to kind of imagine or, or picture. So what came to mind for me was, was the eye of a tornado. So let's say you've gotten down into a bunker. There's been chaos that's come through the house. I haven't personally experienced a tornado, but I know that we consistently have those kinds of things throughout our country and our world, and they're dangerous and devastating. But we all can kind of picture that moment where the, the rumbling, the wind, the destruction passes, but we know it's not quite over. There's actually this, this calmness, this peace in the eye of the storm. So imagine with me, you step out of the bunker, you look around, and you can still see the tornado. Obviously, it's still completely there. The destruction is all around. You know there's more destruction to come. You're not out of it yet. But there's this moment of peace. It's quiet. It's calm. What, what Paul's saying here and what it kind of challenges and it's showing me and hopefully it's speaking to you is that I want that kind of peace even in the midst of what's going on around me. Because we all love and we want to pray for peace. We want to pray, God, deliver us from these obstacles. But we've seen throughout the story of the Bible, it's not always the deliverance that we've expected or that we maybe want, or it's not in the timing that we want. So what does peace in the midst of chaos look like for you? Well, God gives peace to his people when they are aligned with his will. What does that mean? It means when we trust in the wisdom of God, when we trust in his ways, not our own, which is the story of scripture from the beginning, from Adam and Eve taking their own belief of what is good instead of trusting in God's wisdom, what we can do, we can find peace with God, peace from God in the midst of our circumstances when we trust in him and his way. We have to be challenged the fact that the Christian life is not going to be easy. What Paul's saying in all of this, the letter, the second letter to the Thessalonians, what he's saying is 
your circumstances are hard and you are experiencing suffering and you're going to, that's actually the way of life. That's what Jesus modeled. He modeled it unto death. And then he called us to follow him. Let that sink in. He called us to follow him, that it's not going to be an easy life, but we're going to face suffering and challenges and chaos. And so whether maybe today you're experiencing relational brokenness, maybe you're experiencing financial hardship and stress, maybe you are physically experiencing persecution wherever you're living or watching this, you can find God's peace by aligning with his will. And that means loving God, loving his ways, putting his ways before ours and then loving our neighbors. By loving your neighbor today, maybe that's that's actually loving your, your spouse and your kids first, and then from there stepping out into the world and loving those around. That's giving generously to the needs of others and then serving physically as well. I don't know about you, I know for myself, when I'm in the midst of something really difficult with my young children, I have under two kids under three, when I'm in the midst of that, if I actually move towards them in love, serving them, trying to work with them, love them through the conflict, I find my heart change. I find myself in the, the eye of the storm where there's actually calmness and peace when there might be physical screaming and running around around me. I can find that peace in the eye of the storm. What's something in your life today that you need to not ask God for deliverance from, but peace in the midst of? I know there's probably many things we can all think of, but I want to challenge you. Find that thing and ask God, maybe not for deliverance today, but for peace in the midst of and how we can align with his will, his way, and his timing today. Let me pray the way Jesus invited us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us today your daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into the testing, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we pray your will be done today. Amen.